Not long ago, I proved that it was possible to beat Super Mario RPG without items or equipment. However, beating Smithy with these restrictions required pushing the party to the maximum level of 30 and was still difficult. So does that mean that there's no hope for beating the post-game bosses without using hammers or mushrooms? On first attempt, most of these fights wipe me in just a turn or few, and with the FP limit still remaining for the base run, it certainly seemed insurmountable. But looking impossible and being impossible are two different things. So I set out to answer the question and didn't back down until I figured out a definitive answer on whether every postgame boss from Jinx to Culex 3D was possible. Due to the difficulty, most of these fights will need a turn-by-turn -turn plan with some requiring favorable RNG rolls back-to-back. -back. So let's jump into it. Can you beat the post-game of Super Mario RPG without items and equipment? Before we start the boss rematches, there are two optional bosses I skipped in the original run that I'll cover now, with the first being Jinx. Jinx has three separate fights of increasing difficulty, but at level 30, all of them are pretty much a pushover and don't require any specific strategy to beat. Culex is the real intro to the post-game bosses, and compared to Smithy is significantly harder. This fight features five different enemies, the main boss and four elemental crystals with different attacks, stats, and turns. They've got a mix of unblockable moves and a wide range of ones that can be blocked, but are hard to predict. The struggle I had with Smithy about managing FP was an issue on Culex too, as I had to balance spending on offense and healing, especially when there were five different damage sources every turn. Even worse is that they can set multiple statuses, including sleep and mushroom, that completely incapacitates the party. The key here actually comes down to the HP values of each enemy and knowing their weaknesses. Every crystal has a different set of resistances and weaknesses, and one is obviously weaker than the others. The wind crystal only has 800 health, and even better, it's the only enemy that can set sleep and mushroom. While it is pretty bulky and resists Malo's Thunderbolt, it just happens to be weak to jump. I found that using Super Jump here, even if you could only manage 10 or so, was pretty optimal and could do over a third of its overall HP. This means it should only take 3 turns to knock it down, and the rest of the party can focus their damage on Culex in the meantime. You might think we need to take the other crystals down, but the threat of running out of FP is larger than their damage output. With the status threat gone, as long as we keep FP for Peach to heal, and reserve the triple gauge for Healing Rainbow, the party should generally be able to stay alive with 4 enemies left. I didn't really talk about chains much in the base video, which is where you hit blocks and attack timings multiple times in a row, but one of the benefits from them is increased defense. Missing an input or few won't be a game over, but it's important to keep this chain up as much as possible to keep the defensive boost going. It took every point of FP I had just to knock the lightning crystal and Culex's 4000 HP out, but with him down we can get to the actual boss rematches now which is exactly where the real difficult begins. And I'll tackle each boss from here based on their difficulty, meaning the first one up is Punchinello. The fight isn't really changed without equipment, though no items does give us a large handicap. Essentially, he summons the bombs, and you're intended to hit them to turn them around. If you miss your timing or don't attack them, they'll rush forward and insta-kill a party member. You can block them, but the more that aren't turned around, the more perfect blocks you have to do, and the more time this fight takes. Attacking Punchinello directly is not even worth it since we do a whopping 2 damage while he's got a total of 1200 HP. To make it worse, Punchinello attacks you as well as the bombs, and can cut through party members with a single attack or two. He also gets Sandstorm, which deals a massive chunk of health and can't be blocked. Our only options for healing are Peach and Healing Rainbow, but if Peach goes down, you need to do the rest of the fight without missing blocks and hoping he doesn't use Sandstorm. Not being able to use items makes every bomb a significant threat and means that to beat Punchinello, almost every block needs to be timed perfectly. But that's why he's the easiest, as we can keep retrying this fight until we get good enough at blocking to block the bombs that we don't turn around, letting us get in the win. Punchinello was the only boss on this list without some strategy, and our next contender requires a very specific one. This was actually my favorite fight from this entire run, because when I started this fight, my party got wiped, and at first, I didn't see any possible way of winning. The premise of this fight is simple. Booster is accompanied by three snifters, and he wants to charge up his 23 engine toy. If he charges it, it will completely wipe all three of your party members with no chance to block or survive. 
In fact, the fight literally begins with him just wiping all of your side, followed by the Sniffsters using unblockable magics for half or more of your HP. When I was trying this, I got a single attack with Bowser and Geno before completely wiping, and that was it. With the knowledge that I'd wipe on turn 1, I tried to go into battle and pop a healing rainbow to get back up, but Booster charges up the engine too fast for that to work. If he starts prepping the train and then any Sniffster boosts him, he'll use it immediately and wipe your side. Leading with Geno gave me a shot at preventing this though. His party buff gives the team a speed boost, and as it turns out, this lets both him and Peach go before Booster or the Sniffsters. Booster has 3,800 HP, while the Sniffsters carry 2,200, and we definitely aren't dealing that much with two or three attacks. Given that we wipe immediately after those attacks, going first really didn't solve anything since they just kept one-shotting me after. But what if we could one-shot them back? Geno Whirl can one-shot enemies, but unfortunately doesn't work on bosses as most people know. However, the Sniffsters aren't bosses, and therefore are susceptible to it. The winning strat is actually quite simple, so here's the turn-by-turn -turn play. Lead with Mario, Peach, and Geno. Geno should Geno Whirl one of the Sniffsters on turn 1. Despite leading with Peach, we're not actually going to use her this turn. If we swap her out for Bowser, he can go in her place and effectively use her speed stat this turn instead of his own. Booster's already charging the train, but if we attack him with Bowser, this will interrupt him and cause him to take another turn to charge it. This gives Geno a chance to whirl one more Snister down, but unfortunately Booster will get his engine going afterwards and wipe our side. I prepped the triple move gauge before this fight via some random battles, which means after using Comeback, I can use Healing Rainbow to get everyone back up. Booster will have already charged the train though and wipe us immediately after, leaving us with only Bowser and Geno and no chance to heal. Since it's our turn again, Geno can finish off the last Sniffster and this is where it's interesting. Booster can't do anything other than charge the engine, but we will always interrupt him before he gets it off since none of his Sniffsters can boost him now. This means from this point on, we can't be damaged as long as we attack. In other words, losing Peach wasn't an issue because we won't ever need to heal or take any damage from this point on. This lets Geno and Bowser repeatedly well on Booster until he goes down, winning what at first seemed impossible. A feeling I had again when challenging Extra Fancy Bunt. His gimmick is that if his candles light up, he'll use a blast that wipes your side. Sounds a little familiar, huh? The Torts will light a candle on every one of their turns, and online guides suggest preventing this by setting sleep on them with Peach. That strategy certainly seemed valid, as they put in a large number of attempts, and it seemingly made the fight easier. But using the suggested strategy just never seemed to get me close to winning. Constantly setting sleep and curing would drain my FP faster than I could knock its almost 4000 HP down. Bunt uses a lot of magic attacks that can't be blocked and sets statuses that once again we can't cure without Peach. Instead of constantly setting sleep, I decided to adopt a strat to generally just hit Bunt enough times to knock out more candles than are being lit. As long as I got two attacks each turn, the Torts wouldn't make any progress in charging the auto kill move, and I'd preserve a lot more FP. That said, fighting Bunt this way is a horrendous RNG fest. He can and will status your entire team, or just decide that the party you have on the field isn't good enough so they need to be wiped. My strategy was to lead with attackers and keep blasting until they went down. When they did, I'd follow up with Healing Rainbow and go back to trying to outpace the Torts. If I ever got into a situation where I risked getting hit by Celebration Shot, I'd set up Sleep with Peach, but any time this was avoidable I'd heavily opt towards trying to revive another member or cure them of their status. Generally speaking, if Bunt decides to status Peach, this fight is probably over, unless she gets the Scarecrow status. This one is unique compared to Mushroom or Sleep, as she's still allowed to use her abilities while turned into a Scarecrow. Mallow is mostly useless in this fight, but if Peach gets low, his HP rain skill is worth using. Or if there aren't many characters left alive, he can take down a candle in a pinch. There's really not much else to say about this fight. I had to hope for good RNG and just try this fight over and over for about 4 hours straight before Bunt decided to let Peach live which gave me a win. 4 hours is pretty tame compared to the next boss though. Bloom was not that big of a threat in the base game, but in post game he's an absolute menace. He sets sleep constantly and when he clones your party members he gets various buffs and protections. 
Unlike the base game, standard attacks basically do nothing, and the only character that could deal decent damage was Mallow, who could deal about 300 with Thunderbolt. Bloom has a total of 4,600 HP, meaning I need at least 15, only giving me 23 left for healing. However, if Balloon clones Mallow, he becomes immune to Thunderbolt until the clone's gone. And with him sending sleep constantly, this fight just felt impossible at first. I needed a strategy that would prevent Balloon from stadiusing us, dealt with any Mallow clones, and kept the party alive for only 23 FP across 20 plus turns. The online guide suggested that setting mute on Balloon with Peach was the key to success, so I did exactly that. Simply taking this approach worked really well. Anytime he cloned Mallow, I could just swap out the physical attackers to deal with the clone quickly. But this wasn't enough, as I'd never get his HP to zero regardless of how perfect an attempt went. The conclusion I came to was that I needed more FP. If you watched the video I did about the base game with these restrictions, you know that you can't just get free ones, as we can't use flower tabs, and there's a limited number of free ones around the world you can get. I was quite certain I'd gotten every random chest, especially since I'd kept a checklist of every secret one. There was one area I didn't do optimally though, which was booster heal. When you do this minigame, every time you touch Peach you get a flower, and that increases your FP. Unfortunately, replaying the minigame and postgame doesn't seem to have the same results, and the only way to redo this was to restart the entire game, which led to the obvious conclusion. I just wasn't looking hard enough. As it turns out, there's one place I missed a bit of FP at, which is Bowser's Castle. Right before getting to Exor, you have to go through three of six doors and beat the relevant challenge. As it turns out, a few of these paths have flower chests that aren't hidden, hence why I missed them. And after clearing all the paths, I managed to pick up an extra three flower points. So back to Balom, and I still lost a bunch. But you know how we mentioned chain counters on Q-Lex. Well, it affects more than just defense. It also affects your offense and speed. And Mallow's Thunderbolt loses almost 100 damage if your chain gets interrupted. With our restricted FP, if we keep casting without a full chain, we'll eventually use too much FP and guarantee a loss. Even beyond that, if Balom decides that he wants to clone Mallow frequently, you need to set mute more frequently, since the clone has to be dealt with before we can get damage in, meaning that we also need good RNG to topple this. And the combination of all of these reasons is why Balom is more difficult than Bunt, as it took even longer to beat him, which is funny because when I beat him, I wound up with 4 FP left, meaning that the 3 I farmed didn't wind up mattering for Balom. Nor did it matter for the next rematch boss, which was Johnny. This is a 1v1 fight between him and Mario, and in a standard playthrough you can offset a lot of the damage with equipment, but without it, Johnny deals a large amount to Mario. This also limits Mario's damage, and without a weapon, we're only dealing 64 damage a turn. It's worth noting that the party members you put on the team seem to still give you their bonuses despite not being on the field. So I stacked Geno for the speed and attack, and Peach for the magic defense, though Bowser's an option too. The short of this fight is that you and Johnny take turns training blows, with every attack of his being blockable. There are no statuses or gimmicks, but when you miss a block, that damage can't be healed. To make matters worse, he gains attack at 1200 HP and gains even more attack and defense when he drops to 600, reducing our damage in half. The strat is simple. Get really darn good at this game and block basically every hit. You might think that using attacks like jump and fire would be good, but unless you're a god gamer that could add 100 super jumps consistently, I actually found that the special attacks dealt less than Mario's standard attacks. He's got 2000 HP, and due to his defense boost, it takes 41 attacks with perfect timing to knock this much health down if you never break chain. 41 turns of perfect inputs may not sound that difficult, but given that he has multiple magic and physical attacks and uses them in a random order, it's actually quite difficult. His diamond saw attack in particular is rough, and this was the attack that took me down the most. I always listened for the sound cube before it hit, but even then I felt like it was quite inconsistent with blocking it. The last thing I'll mention about Jotty is that you can get a partial block which reduces the damage instead of fully negating it, and you get to keep your combo count. If you fully miss a block, you only get one miss for the whole fight before you lose, or if you partially block, then you can withstand two hits. This boss took me 10 hours of reattempts to get such a perfect run, and I still partially missed two blocks during my win. 
We've taken out almost every boss, but there's one more penultimate challenge in the remake that didn't exist in the original, Culex 3D. The first time I challenged Culex, it went horribly. I walked in, he nuked everyone down to 1 HP, then wiped them with Petal Blast so I was left with two characters. Each of them got to attack one time and then proceeded to be wiped as well. Speed was an issue and there didn't seem to be a possibility to go before Meteor, but if Gino is up front he can at least get an attack before the crystals do. That barely helped and mostly just got me one more attack as Peach and Mallow would go down to the unblockable magics afterwards. These crystals seem to be hard coded to all spam unblockable magic on their very first turn, so if we want any hope there needs to be a way to survive them. There's one mechanic I've practically not used this whole run, which is defend. If we repeat that first turn but defend with Peach and Mallow, it turns out that they can actually survive that initial magic barrage. This lets the party get Mario back up and then pop healing rainbow if we prep the gauge before. But this is where the real puzzle begins. Every time a crystal goes down, it buffs everything that's still alive. Additionally, Culex has 9999 HP, while each crystal has as much health as most other rematch bosses. They also have a resistance and weakness, and with our limited FP, that amount of HP just doesn't seem feasible to take down. If none of that sounded bad enough, we're dealing with unblockable magics, statuses, meteor happening every 4 turns, and if you take Culex out before all 4 crystals, he revives. Despite focusing on the crystal's weaknesses, I ran into a hard wall with this amount of FP and was barely able to take even one down before wiping. There was just way too much to this fight. I'm just gonna say it, this seems absolutely impossible without items and equipment. It just seems completely undoable. But I don't care about undoable or impossible, I simply needed to dig deeper than I had for any other fight. In my research, I stumbled across a secret unique mechanic I didn't even know existed. As it turns out, Mario's basic jump ability has a hidden counter, and every time you use it, that counter raises. If you keep raising it, the base power of jump will increase, and it allows you to get up to 127 extra damage on Mario's basic jump. By some insane stroke of luck, the crystal that sets Mushroom in sleep just happens to be weak to Mario's jump ability. So, I spent some time eradicating every Goomba from the starting area to reach this damage cap. This tool gave me some hope, so I started up attempts again. The starting strategy with Geno and the defends I repeated, and instead of using Healing Rainbow with Mario, I'd hit the Green Crystal with Jump. I started the battle with a 35 chain and it's no coincidence. Every multiple of 10, we get a large boost to our gauge, and starting with 35 means that after the jump we're at 39. Using Healing Rainbow right after means that the next attack or block gives us that boost, and this type of optimization was absolutely necessary. At this point, the focus is on the Green Crystal. It takes 3-4 jumps to take it down, and it's possible to knock it out as early as right after the second Meteor. However, Culex also locks commands like Bowyer did, and if he locks the ability or attack command, or the Wind Crystal decides to status in these few turns, then the attempt is over. The buff that the Wind Crystal gives out is just a speed buff, so having it go down first isn't really a big deal. At this point, the party should focus on getting the triple gauge built up as often as possible to keep members alive, while targeting the Fire Crystal with your strongest physical attackers. Every FP point that can be preserved should be, and I would go as far as swapping out to down members to make Culex's Meteor only target Mario. The Fire Crystal would be the second to fall. Its buff is attack power, which you'd think we'd want last, but the expectation is that every attack needs to be blocked. Missing one drops your stats, makes the triple gauge feel slower, and puts the attempt at risk especially due to the Meteor timer. When the fight turned to two crystals though, I hit another issue. I wasn't getting enough blocks in to fill the triple gauge before needing healing rainbow. To offset this, this forced me to start using Thunderbolt with Mallow for at least some of the fight when he gets down to three crystals to try to take them down within a short timing of each other. This surprisingly worked, and I managed to knock out all four crystals, at which point Culex changes his Meteor to Final Claw. This attack is blockable, and you'd think if we just perfect block the rest of the fight we're set to win. Unfortunately, Culex himself has a magic move we can't block, called Meteor Force, that's not on the turn timer and he can use it random. 
I'd be basically out of FP at this point, and he would inevitably take me down due to not being able to heal. I tried over and over and over to beat him using this strategy, and I never could. This really wasn't the way that I wanted this run to end. So I decided not to end it there. If I told you that a single move would be the answer to tackling this battle, what would your guess be? 100 input super jump? Mario's jump? Gino's buffing ability? Or maybe one of the offensive triple moves or even spare us all? Every single one of those is incorrect. The one move that gives us hope is the triple move that isn't a triple move, Toad Assist. If any party member other than Mario is down and on the field while you use the triple move gauge, you get a chest that you can hit to get a random support buff from Toad. As it turns out, one of the things this can give you is a full restore of your FP gauge, which solves the last issue remaining with this fight. So we've replayed the entire Keelex battle over and over until getting past the crystals again, and then made a situation where we can use Toad Assist and hope for the FP restore. I noticed that these items are visually in a specific order, and if you count them, you can jump at just the right time to get an item of your choice. The timing is really difficult, but it is possible. It would take over an hour of attempts to get the RNG to get back to this point in the battle, and a full 20 minutes of battle time to get to even try for a toad assist. But eventually, I did nail an FP restore on it, and at that point, I knew I couldn't blow this attempt. I blocked almost every single move, and even got my combo counter up to 100 at one point. I only used FP to heal and revive and save every healing rainbow until Mario, Gino, and Bowser had all gone down and started a grueling back and forth of exchanging blows. This exchange went so long that I discovered that even Culex 3 d can run out of FP, and somewhere under a thousand health, he actually stopped being able to use most of his moves. After a 37 minute battle, it happened. His HP hit zero. It was decided. It is possible to defeat him without items or equipment. No accessories, no weapons, no armor, and not even mushrooms. And what I got for a reward was him insulting me about taking 75 turns to defeat him. The gall of this guy. Do you have any clue on how hard I worked to take you down, Culex? Still, I'm pretty happy that this crazy and stupid challenge idea was actually possible, and I'm actually quite proud of taking all of these bosses down. I really enjoyed this Super Mario RPG remake and would certainly love to do another run with it. That said, I think Mario's going nuts without having access to any of his mushrooms, and he definitely deserves some after that. If you enjoyed this run, consider dropping a like, comment, or clicking subscribe to get notified for new runs and help out the channel. For now, I'm gonna go back and visit some other titles and see what kind of fun runs I can come up with. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.